Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we have both of those in one go today. <laughs> Mrs Levitas, how are you? I'm <laughs> very good, thank you. Still getting used to the name. It's strange, isn't it? I mean, here we were in 2008 doing the last hour special for the BBC and we've spoken in between at various concerts. Your life is extraordinary and it just gets better and better. <laughs> and you presumably are the most happy you've ever been. This is honestly the best year of my life. Um, I feel so lucky. I think generally you feel like you're either you're career's having a good year or your personal life's having a good year um i don't think i've had one where you know i felt like they've been on an equal footing and yeah it's the best year ever and i I don't want it to end how does it feel when you've got it right and you've found the person who makes you feel whole and content and wonderful it just everything clicks into place and you know when you know and that's the that's the only way i can put it i don't know how i know but um it's it's right and i'm very very happy I know the last time we spoke, we spoke of spirituality and those guiding you from above. How do you explain it? Because it sort of came out of the blue, didn't it? We share a lot in common anyway. Um, Aside from the obvious being that we're both artistic people, he's a sculptor and a painter and a filmmaker. Um, We both lost our fathers to lung cancer when we were young and I think that that if anybody's ever you know lost a parent at a young age that you you're already in some kind of club like you are you understand each other in a certain way so I think there's I don't know maybe our dads were plotting it above <laughs> and I guess the only downside to that wonderful day and we saw those pictures was that your dad couldn't be there in person I'm sure he was there in spirit Absolutely, and we paid um, a lot of tributes to him. And uh, my mum walked me down the aisle and did the speech in, in place of my father, so he was definitely there. How do you cope with the emotion of a day like that? Because it was on such an enormous scale. You'd got so much going on in your head, you could probably start a conference. It was all about you. And of course, the world was interested as well. It wasn't just about you and him and the family. I mean, we all wanted to know, which is lovely, (laughs) but it's quite intrusive, isn't it? Well, that's actually why I was thrilled when I saw that George Clooney was getting married on the same day as us. (laughs) Because I really didn't want that kind of wedding. And, um, you know, we were able to, unfortunately, we, we had to swear everybody to secrecy because we didn't want it to be a circus and we were offered to sell our wedding but we didn't want to and we, we declined um, and so we just we just wanted to be a normal bride and groom and just have all the family over and not be a showbiz event and have a day off and enjoy it and we were lucky because um, okay it came out the day before but we, we got a run up without people knowing and therefore we had a, a fairly normal day for us and it was fantastic. Is it still extraordinary that we care? I mean, I spoke to you about this last time. You are so exceptional and brilliant and talented. And you are not normal in a sense that you're that brilliant. But at the same time, you're just a normal girl from Wales who wants to be normal. Do you get fed up of people like me talking to you about it? <laughs> uh, so many questions there. Um, I um, I don't think of myself like all those lovely things you just said. And um, I think that, I, yes, I do want to be um, normal. I feel like in... 10 years I'm I'm quite happy with the fact that I think I've got through a decade with all the same friends that I had before the record contract my family being just as important to me Um, and I still feel like okay I'm more confident but I think that comes with age I understand my job better my performance skills are more developed but ultimately I think I'm pretty much the same person so um, I think that's something to be really to be happy I'm not I'm never going to get used to people running with me with cameras in the park I'm never going to get used to people wanting to look in, you know talk to me in the shops that's a nice bit of it but you know every job's got ups and downs I always say there are certain people in life who are blessed with everything look at this face this is not a guy that's oh, been blessed yeah. but when I look at your CD and then I look at your CV and then I look at you I think you really have got everything I mean you've got the beauty which is appealing we don't want to look at ugly people let's be honest and then I listen to this new CD and your voice is as strong if not stronger than ever that tone and that richness is just getting better and better and better and I've seen you live I don't know 10 or 15 times over the years at various events and you hold that audience in the palm of your hand I wonder how you view yourself do you know how good you are at what you do um (laughs) no probably not I mean I uh I just try and go out there and and just have fun and be myself enjoy it it's one of those things that I think um you at the very beginning somebody gave me advice which was like just be yourself. Don't put on an act. Don't be this uh, this other persona because it's going to be a very hard act to keep up. And and certainly when I go out on stage, you know, I, I feel like I m- get the chance to be more myself on stage than anywhere else. So um, I like that talking to the audience part. I like that 
that banter it's a special bit for me and you make it look so easy i noticed the title of this new album is home sweet home and i guess there's a double meaning to that you are home now aren't you you've found your place on stage you've found your place at home and your place within yourself that's at its most confident and happy is that what this is about yeah um it's it's it has many meanings exactly as you said i feel i feel in a really sort of centered and settled place but um also i think when you're making your 10th album and you sort of go right what what were the bits that worked what didn't work um what did i enjoy and of course over the 10 years you never want to make the same album so you're naturally um experimenting and i did you know a cover of a dolly parton song i did a cover of evanescence this kind of stuff i think that what i realized looking back was i really am happiest in that classical routing um in the songs that come from classical and then we can work to make them more accessible and to make them sound contemporary but ultimately it's the classical stuff so i felt like i'd gone full circle to the sort of style of my first few albums and i've also gone back to the record company that signed me when i was a 23 year old school teacher so to like be back with them and back with the original team it just feels like I've come home in a musical sense and um, with all the travelling of the past decade um, it, it's also nice to feel like okay I'm back in the UK this is where I feel so proud to have come from and so it was a little tribute to Wales and to the UK It's interesting as well I'd written on my list that we haven't even got to yet about travel because your life is tortuous in a way you're on these planes where everybody's coughing and sneezing and then you've got to go and perform Sunday night you're going to do Strictly is it terrifying being you in a way because if you don't sound like Catherine Jenkins we're not going to be impressed are we? <laughs> um, there is a, of course a pressure I, I totally appreciate that when people are spending their you know their hard earned money for a ticket they want me to be on good form and I, I feel that pressure um and it comes with a responsibility. So there are certain things like I can't drink alcohol, you know, at least five days before I sing, no dairy products on the day. I don't speak for 24 hours before I sing. All this sounds pretty hardcore, but it's what I have to do. And I don't think about it now. It's just natural to me. But um, these are things that I have put, you know, built into my life to make sure that I can sing my best. Sunday night you're going to be doing Strictly I, I don't know whether you can comment on this but it, there must be something in you that thinks I can do this live and I can show off when other people on other shows don't does that mean a lot to you that you give a live performance because doing it to a tape anybody can do that can't they really I think it honestly depends um, who the artist is personally I think if you're going to um, you know classical musicians I, I hate I hate it if somebody asks me can you mime for you know sometimes there's a technical thing like they're filming something in a certain way maybe it's outdoors they haven't got the sound quality they may ask you to mime in which case that usually really upsets me I will always choose to sing live um, and I think that of course if you're doing a crazy dance routine sometimes you know maybe you can't um, sing but you know it's it's their choice but me i'm i'm happy i get to i'm happy that i get to sing live and it would always be my my option and that of course is where you're home can anything go wrong now i mean i imagine when you're on stage even if the mic went down you'd carry on wouldn't you you seem incredibly confident or is that all facade oh no i've, I've learned i think over the years is you know if something went wrong on stage now i know how to handle it in the first year, I probably would have had a panic and, a, you know, I would have lost myself. But now you've got to look at these, you know, whether it's you forget the words or your dress pings off, you know, like a strap happens. You get so <laughs> there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, the mics fail, the lights go out, whatever. You've just got to kind of laugh and get on with it and make it, you know, I usually tell the audience when something goes wrong and I make a joke out of it because, you know, those are the things that, make you remember a concert as well you know do you remember that time when and you do remember you know of all the concerts i can remember those things and it's special um talking of things special you give so much of yourself to charity and this is something that i obviously is not you're doing for pr like so many do i know this year has been kind of tough with polly and all of that stuff and losing friends and we're both the same age and it is strange isn't it when you become of an age where your own friends are passing away is very very difficult mm -hmm. family members you you can kind of understand what do you draw from that because i've seen on twitter so many of your fans draw strength from your incredible ability to cope with this stuff what does it teach you what does it tell you in life when these people who are so magical leave us um you're right it is so weird when it's somebody in your age group you know when you when you've got your i've i'm lucky i've got you know sort of six best girlfriends and never ever did it cross my mind that polly wouldn't be at my wedding um and 
you know, it's just, it's, it's tragic. But Polly had an amazing sense of, you know, she really had this energy that she was going to live every day. And she never gave up and she was always so brave. And if she was here, she'd be the first one, you know, jetting off to visit some place she'd always wanted to go or the first one on the dance floor at a party. And, and that's really my thing is that, you know, I almost feel like, well, I'm lucky that I'm here and I have to live the life that she would want and I have to take inspiration from, the, from her attitude and that I learned that lesson from my dad too. How do you do it on those shows when you're coming back after something like that and you're singing these incredibly emotional songs and you sort of have to keep it under control, can't you? Because you can't be a blubbering wreck. How do you do that? It's a really hard one because the minute you cry um, or you lose focus, the voice goes. And, um, you know, I I have sung it a lot of different difficult situations, but I think probably the two most difficult times to sing, one incredibly happy, one incredibly sad, I sang it. I sang at Polly's funeral um, and it was almost a case of literally having to mentally zone out to be able to sing the song because I wanted to honour her but not being able to um, almost really appreciate where I was until afterwards and then, you know, and then I was a mess afterwards but I had to sing the song um, and I also sang at my sister's wedding and that's probably the worst I've ever sung in my life <laughs> because I was so happy and I was so emotional <laughs> that I think it was pretty rubbish <laughs> I just couldn't keep it together <laughs> It's a funny old world isn't it how you go from the highs and the lows and they're the same emotion in a way aren't they they're almost uncontrollable um, for you now as we started we'll end how we started with this happiness and the place you are I know the next thing I feel a bit of sort of Kate and Prince William coming on about you they all want you to have a family um, what What's the plan? Is there one or what happens, what happens? It's so funny. Like, you know, when you get engaged, everybody wants to, when are you getting married? And then you get married and when are you having babies? It's like, give us a rest, give us a chance. Um, I do I do really want a family. Um, I think that just in the foreseeable future, I'm about to obviously be talking about the album until Christmas and then I'm touring the UK through February and March. Um, and then I've got to do that in other places around the world. And then at that point, it might be nice to sort of take a little bit of time out and see what happens and it's definitely on the list of priorities so the newspapers can start the rumors about next summer then oh, something already start i've already <laughs> had two calls my my manager called me um, last week she's like are you pregnant i'm like you saw me drinking champagne last week come on like i i can't cope with this and i can't cope with this call every week how beautiful is that baby going to be, though? I mean, it's almost <laughs> sickening, isn't it? Well, please, God. Please, God, that we're lucky. Touch wood. We're lucky enough. Um, and they're fit and healthy, and that's all I care about. It's amazing what time does, isn't it? How 2008, you were living a completely different life, and here you are today. I mean, is it the dream you hope for through the ups and downs that we've talked through in life? And there's always going to be equal ups and downs. As you're sat here now, is it all a bit of a dream? It's a complete dream. It's a whirlwind. Um, I didn't have a dream as to what this would be. I didn't think I would end up in this kind of um, commercial side of music. So the certainly the singing opportunities are far above and beyond anything I thought possible. Um, the, the lifestyle stuff is just crazy and I'm not sure I'll ever take that in properly, but I've been so fortunate. If, you know, if it stops tomorrow, I've had an amazing decade and I feel very, very lucky. Do you know what I love the most about you is your humility and the fact you don't get involved in the nonsense. We don't see you falling out of clubs or we don't see you looking for PR opportunities. You do what you do and that's why I think you're such a genius and you really are at the top of your game for that and you should be applauded for it. Seems like everybody's making headlines for, for no reason. You just do what you do and make that sing for itself, don't you? Well, I, I always just wanted to be a singer. Um, I'm not really that interested in, in being a celebrity. I know that I think we've got a... Um, a thing in the UK of sort of talking about fem successful females that they have to be sort of ambitious and driven and all this kind of stuff. I just think I work hard and uh, I want to have the musical opportunity so all the rest you sort of have to do to make those happen. Um, and that will always, the music will always be the priority and the bit the reason why I do the rest of it. That's why I don't believe in tokenism. I think it does people like you a disjustice because, you know, the most powerful woman in the world is Oprah Winfrey. She's black and a woman. The best singer in Britain is arguably you and your female. You don't need token gestures, do you, to be given in your place? And it almost sets you back by doing that. It's pointless. Um, I do think that, you know, women are, um, I don't know, it's sort of sometimes get a little bit of a, 
um, unfair run. Um, but you know, it is what it is, and um, I can't complain. I've I've got an amazing job. I'm lucky that I get to sing. I'm lucky that people want to come and hear me. Um, and so, you know, we have to take the rough with the smooth. I hope you know how much we love you. The fans on these websites, where I put these interviews up just adore you from my grandma to my mother to myself you've just got a warmth about you and I wish you every happiness in the future Catherine Jenkins your new album is out now it's called Home Sweet Home it really is tremendous and it's you doing what you do best and of course on tour next year look forward to seeing you thank you for your time thank you such a lovely interview thank you